today's topic is percutaneous chemical lumbar sympathectomy before i should proceed with the actual case discussion let me share one of my very interesting experience about this thing patient was 60 years male chronic smoker having severe rest pain of the lower limb having ulcers over it and clinically diagnosed it as a tao that is thromboangiitis obliterans that is burgess disease and the findings on the mri are right iliac and femoral artery blockage so surgeon decided to reverse prize it and for the confirmation we do the peripheral angiography and also along with that a coronary angiography was also done because the coincidence of the coronary artery involvement along with the peripheral vascular disease is very high and it increases with the age and it has been observed that the right coronary artery is also involved very critically stenosed so decided to do first the coronary angiography first before the actual surgical revascularization of the lower limb as a life saving measure but on table during angioplasty there was a dissection of the right coronary artery while passing the guide wire and there is no flow further in the right coronary artery and it was a situation like a acute coronary syndrome acute myocardial infarction somehow we could able to manage with clinically they could able to do only the balloon dilatation of that part and rest will managed medically and we came out of the cath lab without any stent in the right coronary artery but the major question remains about the limb pain about the peripheral vascular disease what to do because everybody has its own concerns as anesthesiologist says that patient is right now high risk because just now patient had situation like a acute coronary syndrome at a ama type of picture so patient is high risk for the anesthesia surgeon says that i could able to do the revascularization but right now patient is unfit for the surgery cardiologist says that just now there is narrow escape and if possible we will do it in a later stage or you can think of cbg also now the real question is with the patient he says that i want a pain relief of foot and get rid of ulcer and surely he is not ready for the any revascularization of the coronary artery because that is not going to relieve his leg pain now this is somewhat a tricky situation what to do now and here comes the role of interventional pain physician i have done a percutaneous lumbar chemical sympathectomy to l2 and l4 to that limb that side there is a good pain relief and improved circulation of the lower limb immediately on table and near about after 2 weeks down the line there was a good ulcer healing more than 70% healing of the right ulcer of the foot and there is no rest pain that is very rewarding uh, any very satisfactory result for there so what is that pcls that is percutaneous chemical lumbar sympathectomy is actually it is actually a procedure in which the interruption of the transmission of impulse through the sympathetic nerve or the ganglion by ablation of lumbar sympathetic ganglion by corrosive chemical agents like a phenol somebody may use alcohol is it so recent no it has been evolved over a period of time near about a century back in 1924 one surgeon cut down this sympathetic chain and found had a very good results and pain relief of the lower limb and over a period of time instead of cutting few surgeons painted this sympathetic chain with the phenol and they found that it is equally effective the real game change occurs when we put a needle under fluoroscopy near the sympathetic chain and inserted a phenol with good result and over a period of time it has been proved that surgical cutting and this lumbar chemical sympathectomy has got a equal effect is equal in terms of outcome what are the real indications of this procedure there are two important indications of this procedure one is lower limb circulatory insufficiency there is a decreased circulation of the lower limb because of many reasons like a burgess disease atherosclerosis of the lower limb vessels are not phenomenon artery limb ablation and to augment the microvascular surgery of the lower limb because due to multiple blockage a surgeon cannot do each and every revascularization 
he does a few anastomoses but the rest part is been covered with the this procedure which will increases the collateral cutaneous circulation and the very popular indication of this procedure is inoperable peripheral vascular disease of the lower limb with rest pain with skin ulcer and another important indication of this procedure is a neuropathic pain of the lower limb that is a chronic pain syndrome of the lower limb that is a phantom limb pain post traumatic neuralgia neuropathic pain of that like a hypozoster like that so let us brush our knowledge <laughs> basic knowledge of anatomy and physiology the lower limb get the sympathetic innervations from the sympathetic ganglion which are situated near the l2 3 and 4 anterolaterally to the vertebra and this sympathetic ganglion gets the innervation from the ventral horn of the spinal cord t10 to l2 and where it synapses at the ganglion and then post synaptic uh, sympathetic efferent goes to the lower limb and not only the sympathetic fibers goes to the sympathetic ganglion one more important fibers that is nociceptive sensory afferent fibers also passes through the this ganglion so when we cut this ganglion there are two effects occurs one is decrease there is no sympathetic outflow and another is no nociceptive inflow to the nervous system or cns where it is exactly situated it is situated along the anterolateral surface of the vertebra number lumbar vertebra 2 3 and 4 there are few anatomical variations with it it is closely related to very vital structures around it anterior to the this chain there is a inferior vena cava and aorta posteriorly you can see the spinal nerves and spinal cord which was separated from the psoas muscles and laterally kidney and ureters are there so how to do the procedure so before any procedure we have to thoroughly evaluate this patient because this patient is associated with very other comorbid conditions like a coronary artery disease like a lung involvement because of the smoking like a copd asthma bronchospasm and should be optimized before the procedure and in that way we have to take the anesthesia fitness as this patient is on the anticoagulants we have to stop the anticoagulants and shift with the heparin as a bridge then we have to explain the procedure to the patient and consent is retrieved accordingly patient is kept nbm and iv fluid should be started because the chances of hypotension like after spinal anesthesia is there because of the sympatholysis we have to prepare the trolley and for that we need a, a long needle a 15 cm long needle 22 or 23 gauge it's a long spinal needle and i prefer to take a three syringes uh, in one uh, 10 ml syringe i prefer to take local anesthesia lignocaine plain in 5 ml syringe i take a sensor can in 5 ml and in which i will take the phenol whenever needed and in 2 ml i used to take dye cardiac monitoring started we have to keep the boiling water ready because the phenol comes in a crystal form to liquefy this phenol we need a boiling water we have to keep cm ready patient is in prone position and we have to paint and drape the lower back we have to identify the vertebras under cm l1 to l5 also we have to keep attention towards the sacralization and neuralization of the vertebra and once we have identified the vertebra 2 3 4 I usually prefer to do the lumbar sympathomy at L2 and L4 ipsilaterally only and the targeted vertebra is marked once the targeted vertebra is marked we have to do the squaring of the vertebra that means we have to either the cranially caudally rotate the C arm so that the end plate of the vertebra it coincides with each other the anterior and posterior vertebral end plates should coincide with each other so that the exact squaring of the vertebra is seen and after squaring we have to tilt c arm ipsilaterally around 25 to 30 degree so that the transverse process of the vertebra come along the lateral margin of the vertebra you can see very well the scotty dog where the eye indicates the pedicle and the nose 
you can see very well here coincides with the transverse process so the tip of the nose that means tip of the transverse sushet should come along the line of the lateral margin of the uh, vertebra and that is our point of entry so you can see here the marking is the the vertebral markings and here the point of entry of our needle why this a uh, squaring of the vertebra and this uh, tilting is done because this is the point of entry and we don't want the spinal nerves to get injured so our needle projection should be in between two nerve roots after identifying this point of entry we go ahead till we go further anteriorly and medially so that the needle tip should lie exactly anterolateral to the vertebra and we confirm in the ap and lateral view end done view is in the oblique view and in ap and lateral view we confirm the exact position of the needle tip in ap view we can see the needle should should be at the eye of the scotty dog that is at the pedicle and in lateral view we assess the depth of the needle and that should not cross the anterior border of the vertebra once we confirm the needle tip we again reconfirm by injecting a dye into it to see the spread of the dye how it spreads superiorly and inferiorly and it should not be enter anywhere with the near by vital structures the most important the needle should tip should not be in the vessel otherwise there will be very dreadful complications can occur including a death and after confirmation by putting a dye we inject phenol that is 10% phenol in 0.5% bupivacaine 5 ml so 5 ml bupivacaine is taken and in that liquefied phenol after boiling this phenol it becomes liquid the liquid phenol 0.5 ml is taken so that it becomes a 10% and slowly slowly it is injected we have to be very precautions while injecting that it should not spill over the patient body or in our own body or particularly our face or eyes because it is a very corrosive agent now something about this phenol it comes in a amber color bottle it is a corrosive chemical agent and why it comes in a amber color bottle because when it comes in contact with the sunlight or in air it causes oxidation of that and it reduces the uh, potency of the phenol to liquefy this crystal phenol we need to boil this phenol to increase the temperature up to 100 degree so that it liquefies it so the, we take the 0.4 or 0.5 ml of liquid phenol in 5 ml of bupivacaine so that it makes around 8 to 10% of the phenol and i usually put at l2 and l4 5 ml phenol pain physician prefers this but few pain physicians prefer to put at l3 level along with l2 or at only single l3 level with a larger volume and what is the exact mechanism of action it causes a protein precipitation and demyelination of the nerves and that's why it disturbs the nerves and ganglion how it acts it acts by two way one is sympatholysis so because of the sympatholysis there is increased blood supply of the lower limb it causes a precapillary arterial sphincters to relax and it increases the blood supply of the lower limb and to that of particularly superficial structures get more increase in the blood supply skin subcutaneous tissue rather than the deeper structures like a muscle and that's why the rest pain because of the rest pain and the cutaneous ulcers improves much better rather than the actual claudication pain of the muscles another effect is the anti nociception anti nociception because through the ganglion the nociceptive fibers also passes and they get interrupted and there is a decrease in the pain of the lower limb so the decrease in the pain of the lower limb and the improvement of the symptoms of the lower limb is because of two way one is decreased ischemia of the lower limb because of the sympatholysis and increased blood flow and second one is because of the the nociceptive fibers get disrupted the immediate effect is a rise in temperature of the lower limb because of the increased vascularity of the lower limb we can see very well on table increase uh, engorgement of vessels veins if you put a temperature you can see 1 or 2 degree celsius rise in the temperature we can, if you see the vessel veins over it the collapsed veins becomes engorged if you put a pulse ox of the toes you can see very well good pulse oximeter uh, wave forms and increase in the pulse oximeter 
actually an improvement the symptom of pain patient get relieved on table immediately after 10 15 minutes and the chances of falling the blood pressure also there because of the sympathizers and late effect is healing of the ulcer few weeks few months down the line the ulcers get heals and demarcation line of ischemia is shifted distally if it is ischemia is above knee the line is shifted below knee if it is below knee if it goes to the ankle if it is the line of ischemia is around ankle it goes to the toes in that way it is shifted slowly downwards as the circulation increases and duration of action is around 6 months to 2 years now what are the selection criteria because every patient will not respond to same there is no 100% results in each and every patients some patients respond very well but other patients will have very 50 60% results so good good effects is observed in arterial ulcers and superficial tissue loss because we have discussed that the more blood flow increases in the superficial area rather than the deep area and that's why the rest pain responds very well rather than the claudications and the ankle brachial pressure index that is a systolic blood pressure index between the ankle blood pressure systolic pressure and the brachial pressure if this index is more than 0.3 or 0.35 that means there is some circulation of the lower limb they these patients responds very well to this procedure rather than the abpi less than 0.3 and the patient having a claudication that is a deep muscle pain and having a diabetic mellitus they respond less to this procedure even though there is a poor outcome of this patient uh, there is definitely a pain reduction is there and it is helpful along with the arterial revascularization surgery to augment the revascularization like any other procedure we have to be careful when there is a allergy to the patient the patient is refusal if there is infection at the site of injection very important contraindication of this procedure is it may be relatively patient is on anticoagulation should be deferred we have to see the inr pt inr and if it is within normal length, then and then only we have to proceed with the this procedure the other uh, things there is diabetic uh, mellitus ihd should be optimized before the surgery no procedure is without any complications as this ganglion is in very close vicinity to the very vital organs around it anterior this aorta inferior vena cava and the paravertebral vessels are there and they are bound to get punctured if we are not place the needle properly and the chances of hematoma are there the more notorious thing on table is that the paravertebral vessels get involved get punctured and that causes continuous bleeding and because of that we have to re adjust the position of the needle even if it happens same um, many times two three times with the same vertebra we, have, we may have to change the site of vertebra instead of 2 4 you can do 3 4 or only 3 or 2 3 like that uh, genito femoral nerves or neuritis also can be observed and it is more with the phenol than the it is more with the alcohol rather than the phenol and that's why phenol is preferred uh, the lateral lateral to the sympathetic chain there is a kidney ureters are there and they are also in danger we don't put needle properly and posterior to ganglion there is a muscle that is psoas muscle and if you inject into the psoas muscle patients suffer with the back pain for few weeks instead of chemical neurolysis there are other methods are also there that is radio frequency ablation of this ganglion recently this has been invented but it has got it shows inferior to the chemical neurolysis and instead of fluoroscopy guided we can do a uh, ct guided in this case this procedure is really bound to a patient suffering from the chronic intractable pain of the lower limb like a complex regional pain syndrome and peripheral vascular disease of the lower limb particularly inoperable peripheral vascular disease with the rest pain and skin ulcers of the lower limb it is very effective less invasive and less expensive and the awareness of this procedure should be raised not only in common public but in medical fraternity also thank you no smoking please